Welcome to our lab. My name is Mikko Hyppänen and this is the data security wrap-up for the year 2006. During 2006, we saw the normal amount of viruses and worms and botnets and spam and phishing going around, but there were also some things we haven't seen before. One thing which was totally new, which really was a new phenomenon, was targeted attacks. This is a phenomenon where a company or an organization is being targeted with malware attacks and they are the only party being targeted. Instead of the attackers sending out millions of mails with infected attachments to random recipients, the attacker might send just five or three emails with an infected attachment only to one single company. We saw this repeated several times over the year 2006 with different kinds of companies and organizations as a target. There were uh, many cases where the actual attack was pulled off by sending emails which looked like they were coming from someone within the organization. The emails were in local languages because we see, saw these attacks happening in several different countries. They were talking about company internal issues. The attachment was typically a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet file or a PowerPoint presentation file which contained an exploit. And in the cases we investigated, the exploit was typically uh, handcrafted so that it wasn't detected by the antivirus which was being used by the company. So the end result is that the employees of the company got a perfectly um, normal looking email with an attachment from someone else in the company with a Word document as an attachment which of course they will double click and open. And as soon as they did that the Word document or Excel spreadsheet file dropped a backdoor to the system which connected to an outside IP address and could then be used to steal all the information on the computer in question or from all the network drives the user could access to. And in many of these cases, the backdoors were also hidden with active rootkit technologies. In one, some of these cases, we actually saw that the rootkits were already used more than a year ago to hide these backdoors being in place. Phishing continues to be a problem and more and more an international problem. Banks all over the world are being targeted and smaller banks in countries which used not to be a target are becoming a target. The fishers are trying to find people who haven't been fooled before. Because that's the way they can get the best percentage of the users clicking on the links and giving out their banking details or their credit card information. Fishers also need a way to move the money back to them. And this is the uh, technique which is mostly being done with money mules. Money mules is the term used for persons who are recruited by phishing gangs to move the money for them. And this is done by sending out job ads for fictional companies, job ads for positions like financial manager. Your job as the financial manager for this international company is to uh, receive payments to your personal account and then wire them to us using Western Union or eGold or FedHard. That's the message these companies or Fishing gangs really are putting out, and they've been successful in hiring perfectly normal people to do this money laundering for them. And in many of these cases, these persons actually had no idea they were actually working for criminal companies and criminal gangs. Fishing will continue to evolve. We believe the next big step will be serious attacks with man in the middle techniques against online banks. Now, we're selling an antivirus program, F-Secure Antivirus. But actually, most of the things we keep stopping with our products are not viruses. We're mostly seeing bots and backdoors and trojans and other types of malware than traditional viruses. If we just look at the whole year 2006, we only really saw two large traditional virus outbreaks during the whole year. That was the Nuxem e-worm and then the Warsov family, which kept causing outbreaks all through the latter part of the year. Warzo, which is also known as Strachion, is a worm which um, uses different domain names to download additional components for it for, uh, to update the virus itself. And then once it has infected the PC, it starts to use those PCs to send out massive amounts of spam. And all the spam sent by Warzo that we've seen is spam for different kind of uh, pharmaceutical companies selling pills and uh, Viagra clones and stuff like that. And funny enough, they're also using similar kinds of domains to host the actual rogue 
web shops. Spam has been growing as a problem. The biggest change in that part has been the change from traditional text-based spam to image-based spam, which is a huge problem right now. Web 2.0, that's all the rage nowadays. Services like Dig, Flickr, YouTube.com and so forth. But these new uh, user-enabled services have also brought a new security problem. We call them web application worms. Worms which infect the services themselves. They're not really infecting the user's own PC or any of the files on the user's own PC. They're infecting um, the web end of these services. They might be using cross-site scripting falls. They might be using servers that includes actual code on the server. Most of the cases that we've actually seen in real life have been targeting MySpace. We've seen worms which infect personal pages on MySpace. And when somebody comes and views an infected page, his own homepage gets infected too. And then it spreads further and further, just like worms do. Now, it's a completely new problem for antivirus companies, because like, how do you fight viruses like this? There's nothing you could scan. There's nothing on the end user's hard drive. There's nothing in the network traffic. Not necessarily. So this is a new phenomenon. Just like another new problem, um, internet viruses affecting massively multiplayer network games. We've seen examples on Second Life, which are actually visible to the game, play game players when they are in the game. And any application that allows scripting and network connectivity could be targeted with similar network attacks. So we might see network worms for World of Warcraft, Lineage, or any other network game. On the mobile malware side, things were progressing too. We went past the 300 different mobile malware number during 2006. And there were new phone models coming out. For example, we saw the first phones running the Symbian Series 6, the third edition, out by different manufacturers. So far, we haven't yet seen any native malware which would be able to run on these new phones. But most likely, we'll see those eventually anyway. I suppose the most interesting development on the mobile side during 2006 was the introduction of spying Trojans. Programs like FlexiSpy or NeoCore. These are programs that you install on a phone uh, silently or secretly. And after you've once installed it to somebody else's phone, you can monitor what the user is doing with his phone. FlexiSpy will send information of every single phone call and text message done on the phone or received by the spying phone to a web page, which then can be monitored by the people who wants to do the spying. And with NeoCall, it will actually send a copy of every single text message and a text message about every single phone call received or done from a phone which is being spied. Both of these programs are actually commercial applications sold by companies residing in uh, Bangkok and in Italy, respectively. So what about 2007? What kind of problems will we see next? It's hard to tell. I'm supposed to be a visionary, but as you can see, I need glasses. But there's a couple of things we know for sure. For example, there will be more and more targets against the Microsoft patch cycle. As you know, Microsoft puts out the patches every second Tuesday of every month. And we are already seeing a phenomenon where the attackers are focusing their efforts to find out new exploits, but only starting to use them right after the new patches are out, leaving them typically with a full month of time to use the exploits before the ne next patch cycle comes out. And of course, we'll certainly see more and more attacks against Vista. Vista has a completely new set of security features, especially the 64-bit version of Vista. And of course, these will be targeted. Vista will not be the operating system to stop the virus problem. We will see more attacks against Wi-Fi, more attacks against Wi-Fi laptops, more attacks against... Max, more attacks against uh, mobile phones, for example, viruses using SMS messaging to spread. And then we might see more viruses on toys. The Swedish toy manufacturer Brio brought out in the end of 2006 a series of toys focusing on computer networks, a toy series called Networkers. And funnily enough, they also have uh, a series of viruses for these networks, including a virus called Viro. Looks like this. Viro monitors your network traffic. This blue thing here is an email server. And uh, when there's Viro monitoring the traffic and an email comes in, Viro will apparently infect the mail. So that's where we are. 